Um, our next presenter is Francesca Greco, and she is currently studying in Heidelberg University in Germany. And maybe you have, can say us what's your field of study right now? Yes. <laughs> um, yes, my um, PhD thesis is about the negativity. Um, in specific sense, negativity between Heidegger and Nishida. So I will present a, a, a part, um, work in progress, about my thesis, my PhD thesis. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> so, um, yes, uh, today I will speak about a particular, a particular concept in the history of philosophy, the nothing, and its fundamental negativity. Mine will be a phenomenological approach that aims at the hermeneutical comparison between the thinking of two important philosophers of the 20s. I'm talking about Heidegger and Nishida, who have taken the question of nothing especially seriously. I consider here the phenomenality of phenomenology not only as a methodological element of my speech, but also as a fundamental modality of negativity, essential to understand the paradoxical nature of nothing. The history of nothing in the philosophical tradition begins with the being. The only roads of inquiry there are to think of one that is, is and that is not possible for it not to be. Wrote by many this. This is already a bad start for the history of something where it's not the protagonist but the antagonist. That it is something is already a problem. I would say a linguistical problem because when we mention something, it begins to be something. Furthermore, if we are not convinced that it could be, the negativity of nothing is already moving and acting in the world. We notice it, uh, we notice it, it's present and acting already in Parmenides' sentence as two crucial points. First, when he relates all, asymmetrically related, in, he relates all to the being that is. And secondly, when he let act the nothing in the negation of not, says that the nothing always assumed the role of negation. Is it not possible for it not to be? Both conception of nothing we are dealing with are nothing of being, and we move in a circle, trapped in a being's monism, because all depends from the being, while the nothing remains unexplored and unpronounced, if only as logical negation or withdrawing privation, negative connotated. As we can see in a couple of commons definition of nothingness, by looking at the dictionary of contemporary English, yes. <laughs> uh, we can read about the special definition of nothingness as empty <coughs> space or complete absence of everything the state of not, not existing. And the Oxford English Dictionary instead reports about nothingness, non-existence, the wordless or vanity of something, condition of insignificant and important non-existent things, state of non-existence. Well, negation then is this logical operation that turns the negated into what is this not, into its opposite, other of being. And privation is that action which withdraws or reduces the being of something. As Hegel reminds us, every negation is a determination, with the consequence that the only truth is the concept, no matter where is it come. But the nothing cannot be determined because it will be a paradox. Precisely when what Plato tries to avoid by playing with words like heteros, other, and enantion, 
opposite. But also Hegel admits that uh, in his science of logic that the nothing cannot be something like the other things and that the negation is only one of the expression of nothing. For this reason, you create nothing in being as the most indeterminate concept, abstaining to further investigate the nature of nothing outside or beyond its indeterminacy and process of negation. Heidegger and Nishida both in their work criticize the flattering of the concept of nothing with and contra Hegel. Philosophical thought is in in its attempt to deal with a definition of nothing, focuses on private, privatized connotation relative to being. Nothing, in this context, cannot absent <coughs> insignificance, meaningless, and act as the reduction of substance of its related. Even metaphysics itself wonders why is there something rather than nothing? in the Grundfrage der Metaphysik. Und, and um, has been dealing with the question as its fundamental issue. In posing this question, it has been taken for granted that something exists. The metaphysics thereby avoid to consider deeply the possibility of nothing, or precisely the possibilities given to us <coughs> by this abyssal concept. The question about nothing wasn't seriously giving a chance. Let's consult two philosophical encyclopedias, the Stenvor and an Italian Encyclopedia Philosophica. The Stenvor Encyclopedia of Philosophy states that the notion of nothingness deals especially with emptiness. with emptiness and operate as negation or privation relatively to something. The Italian philosopher Emanuele Severino, before presenting an excursus of the history of nothing, writes under definition, its definition, nulla or niente is the opposite of ente, entity, absence or absolute privation of every possibility. A couple of things caught my attention among his words. On, on the one hand, the fact that we are still thinking in terms of opposition, or as Nishida would say, we are still in the Tairitsu Tekimu no Basho, where the nothing is determined as a being. It is nothing of beings. On the other hand, we are already dealing with that depriving not, not nothing as privation of possibility. Moreover, he used both Italian terms for nothing, niente and nulla, as synonyms, just as we are used to in the spoken language. As it seems to me, we cannot leave the field of beings monies without falling into a dualistical, dualistically into the realm of the opposition in a logic of exclusion. I found very interesting that the Italian has two different words to express a something more or less within its not existence has been unanimously <coughs> considered among philosophers as unproblematic, unworthy of dis differentiation. I don't think that this is an accident. These two words refer to the principal possibility of understanding of the nothing in its negativity. Heidegger and Ishida inherits this difference an ontological one called it Heidegger, and focused upon, in, upon it in their works, works. Both aim to overcome the Aristotelian, Aristotelian metaphysical substance. For Heidegger, <coughs> through the overtaking of the ontological dichotomy subject-object by the structure of being in the world of Dasein. And for Nishida, through the linguistic structure of subject-predicate, even if in Japanese one word can express, express the meaning of a word sentence, or a word sentence. My goal for this symposium will be not only to point out the inner difference between these two or more conception of nothing, as the two philosophers in the different ways did, but also to inquire 
into the phenomena of negativity, instead negation or privation, which are placed in, in the negativity, in place. Up until now, we and the most philosophical tradition have been talking about only a part of nothing's negativity. Precisely in its depriving part relative to being, in its character as non ende, niente, that Nishida calls sota e mu, relative nothing. In this book, La morte e la terra, The Death and the Earth, Severino points out that non being is a complex meaning constituted from not and being, which nevertheless has the feature typical of any simple meaning. The simplicity of nothing has been put aside in favor of being in what Nishida in general calls the Western philosophy. The nothing is at first and for the most part distorted with respect to its original character recognized Heidegger in what is metaphysics. The nothing sinks its roots deeper than, than, than the not of negation. If we want to brush the boundary of its nebulous definability and challenge the unobjectifiable undifferentiated, we can argue that the nothing, when cannot be reading as negation of single being, that then could be, then could we say it negates the wall of being, all that exists, as a totality, according to, <laughs> as a totality. According to Heidegger, we can make experience of nothing, not only in the fundamental state of mind, und befindlichkeit, of anxiety and boredom, but also as meaningful totality of an uh, equip equipmental wall, bewandtnis ganzheit. In these experiences, the single being and all its connection lose meaning and disappear in an, in a, in an indefinite one an analog description of the beginning of Hegel's logic. Uh, the being are embraces in a, embraced in a further embroning field and dissolve into this underground. After, or better for, for Nishida, before, in understanding a priori for Heidegger, the denying breakdown of beings and its absolute privation of beings, what remains, it's only a silent emptiness because also the language abandons us. <coughs> the emptiness showed us the simple wholeness of nothing and introduced as the positive connotation of nothing. Now is nothing less left to negate. In Italian, we call it nulla. According to Nishida, it is an original place in placing, or like Felipe uh, says, occurrence, the positive source of the real. Its emptiness is to assume a poor receptivity, holding the possible, the possible service of all being, all possibilities for phenomena to show itself. It is like phenomena include their world as an essential part of their manifestation. This world would be in would then be a complex relational and interrelational world, not consuming itself in the sum of its elements. It's an holistical world. The plasticity of the problem of nothing reveals the fact that the question of nothing put us the questioner ourselves and the questioner ourselves in question. This is a metaphysical question, right, Heidegger? In what's metaphysics? We can figure this ontological underground of being as matrix, as zero point, the original point of existence, existence. Not accidentally, as with the Italian term nulla, the ancient Sanskrit word zero, sunya, is recalled the Buddhistic concept of emptiness, sunyata, which becomes relevant in Nishida's philosophy, deeply influenced by Zen Buddhist attitude. Nevertheless, it is interesting to notice as Kreml does, as Kreml does the ancient associ association 
of the sense of the nothing with an open space in the light of Nishida's own development, development of the nothing in terms of place. Another interesting point in regard to this ancient Chinese concept of nothing Wu, it's, it's originally referred to a clearing opening made in what was previously covered by thick vegetation as a Lichtung, the clearing in Heidegger. Neither Nishida nor obviously Heidegger were probably aware of such ancient of such ancient um, Neither Nishida nor obviously Heidegger were probably aware of such ancient etymological significance of pre-philosophical meaning of the term nothing, despite the meaningful correspondence between <coughs> Nishida representation of nothing as open and empty place and Heidegger's portrayal of, true, of, of the truth of beings as often hide the star sign in the Lichtung. Literally the place in the forest where the three seen out and the light comes like a thief in the forest. Mm. I'll try to skip uh, some parts. <coughs> Maybe short announcement. I hope everybody is okay if we move a little bit into the coffee break. Yeah. Well, the characterization of um, Nishida's concept of true, absolute nothing, as in, in place in place, is not casually referring to the making room of the, of the concrete possibilities of being. Indeed, <coughs> only in the vacuum, we can do find space, enough space for possibility. Um, when we understand it in this way, the negative of nothing is now simultaneously its positivity. Um, okay. To understand the nothing in its paradoxical phenomenological negativity, we have to approach a simultaneous logic and forget the, uh, the binary opposition logic of true, false, yes, no, subject, object, and um, the paradoxical nature of nothing tampers the rules of logic so much that we need another kind of logic to investigate the negativity of nothing. I will call it uh, the betweens logic, um, but this logic is, isn't really something new. We found it, for example, in one of the most ancient texts of early Buddhism, the Heart Sutra, that state uh, shiki soku zeku ku soku ze shiki, so the soku logic. According to this phrase, I, uh, what I intend under between logic is expressed by the kanji soku. The soku logic <coughs> embraced that, that which is the advertising logic an adversative logic of non-contradiction forbidden, the paradox of the self-identity contradictory difference, as it emerged in the Heart Sutra. The simultaneous of what we consider opposite, the positive and the negative, is the core of the negativity and the only possibility of the paradoxality of phenomena. Indeed, when we investigate a phenomenon, we consider it appearing in its word, underground context. To take a concrete example, oops, yes. <laughs> to take a concrete example, uh, to be able to read this kanji, <laughs> yeah, uh, on the blackboard, we need to perceive the difference between it and the underground in which she described writing with a black brush on the black board would mean to be, be um, the monims of beings, where the wall is swallowing all. Because think then the negativity as the nothing in this case, as 
the negativity of nothing in this case as a pathway between the positive of the appearing and the negative of its in placing underground in which phenomenality of nothing gains meaning. So, thank you for your attention. <laughs> Thank you very much. And we have now just a couple of minutes for comments and questions, and then we move on. And we go five or ten minutes into the coffee break, and then we have enough time for everybody. So, are there comments or questions? I have a comment. I'm not very familiar with who she does or Heidegger's works. I learned about Heidegger at university, of course, but uh, while you were talking and you showed us this picture of Mu or non-picture of Mu, uh, I remember that I have a favorite poem in Hungarian, I won't be saying it right now, but the logic of the poem is that something isn't here. And I, and I have an example for everyone. Uh, if I said that there's a black chair behind the table, everybody would say that it's true, there is a black chair behind the table. But if I said there is no tiger under the table, put your hand up if you imagine the tiger. <laughs> while I said the word. Uh, this is kind of like the dynamism that's at work in nothingness. Uh, I just wanted to say this because it's a very simple expression of how art, for example, can show us how this works. Because uh, when we concentrate on being, we concentrate on the chair, mm -hmm. we see the chair, we accept it's there, and it's over. Uh, there's permanence. And if we see the non-tiger under the table, there's a work, like a rock into our minds. There are ripples in our consciousness that create a dynamic system. And I just thought that this would help. Maybe I was thinking about it while you were talking. Thank you. So that, thank you. That's really what I mean when I, I say that uh, um, phenomenology is not only a method for me. Mm -hmm. Is there another question or comment? If that is not the case, then let's move on. Thank you very much again. Thank you. Thank you.